Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at the LC circuit, a circuit that only has an inductor and a capacitor. And what will happen? Well, let's do the conceptual approach first. Before we talk about the mathematics and the equations, let's get a feel of what would actually happen. So let's say we have this circuit right here. It just has a capacitor and an inductor, and we're going to start at the point where the capacitor has no charge on it whatsoever, and the inductor has the maximum magnetic field build up in it. That will happen when the current has reached its maximum value. So when we have a maximum amount of current flowing through the circuit from the inductor to the capacitor, the energy stored in the magnetic field of the inductor is going to be one-half times the inductance times the current through the inductor squared. As the current continues to flow, it begins to file, pile charges onto the capacitor. So as the capacitor begins to build up with charge, it begins to push back on the current flow. The current becomes uh, smaller, and because the current is smaller, we can then say that the energy on the magnetic, uh, in the magnetic field is now going to be one-half Li squared, where I is, of course, less than the maximum I. So the energy on the uh, inductor begins to diminish, and the energy on the capacitor begins to increase. The amount of energy on the capacitor at that point will be equal to one-half times the charge on the capacitor squared divided by the capacitance. Eventually, the capacitor will get fully charged. Maximum charge will build up on the capacitor. At that point, the current will stop. It's basically the current will stop. The capacitor is now fully charged. Since there's no current flowing in the circuit, there's no magnetic field in the inductor. So the energy in the inductor is zero, and the energy in the capacitor now has reached its maximum value. It's equal to one half times the total charge on the capacitor squared divided by the capacitance. The energy that was stored on the inductor, the exact same amount, will now be stored on the capacitor. So all of the energy is transferred from the inductor to the capacitor. At that point, the capacitor begins to discharge. Current is beginning to flow back in this direction. Remember, there's energy stored in the capacitor. It pushes that charge back into the circuit, back through the inductor. The inductor tries to oppose the change in current. By doing so, it starts building up a magnetic field. It starts building up energy. Energy begins to dissipate out of the capacitor as charge is being pushed back into the circuit. And eventually, the maximum current will be reached when the capacitor is now fully discharged and the maximum current is reached, therefore we now have maximum energy in the inductor. The capacitor has zero energy, the inductor now has maximum energy. All the energy that was in the capacitor here has now transferred into energy in the inductor. But since the current was flowing at its maximum, it's not going to stop instantaneously, it's going to keep on flowing, as we can see here, which now means that charge is now going to pile up on the other side of the capacitor, as its charge begins to fill up, it begins to push back against the current. The current begins to diminish, but the inductor is going to continue pushing the current through the circuit until the capacitor is fully charged. At that point, we have maximum energy in the capacitor again, one-half Q squared divided by C, zero energy in the inductor because all the magnetic field is being, is being used to push all the current back onto the capacitor. At that point, the capacitor begins to push charge back in the opposite direction, the magnetic field is going to build back up in the inductor as it's beginning to oppose that change in the current. It begins to increase its content of energy as the magnetic field builds up until it, it fills up to its maximum energy capacity. That's when the maximum current is, is reached. That's at the point when there's zero charge on the capacitor. We now have maximum current in the opposite direction. We have maximum magnetic field in the inductor, therefore maximum energy. And at that point, we're back to the point one right here where current will continue to flow through to the capacitor, it begins to charge up and the whole process starts over again. And so what will happen is that charge will, will flow into the capacitor, the capacitor will then push all the charge of inductor back to the other side and back to the first side and back to the other side. And so current will go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And assuming that there's no resistance in the circuit, which of course in the real world that doesn't exist, there's always going to be some small amount of resistance, even if all you have are conductors. But if you assume for a moment that it's a perfect conductor, there's no resistance whatsoever in the circuit, this oscillation back and forth would go on forever and ever and ever. And it's very analogous to a mass on a spring. You put in potential energy by extending the spring, you let go, the mass is now going to flow back and forth, and the energy exchange is going to be between potential and kinetic energy, potential and kinetic energy as it goes through its equilibrium point, 
to the opposite side, back to the equilibrium point, back to the maximum ligation, back to the equilibrium point, back to the maximum compression, and so forth, it is ex exactly analogous to that. If we take a look at what the current flow looks like, in case number one, we have maximum current in the clockwise direction, let's just call that a positive direction, doesn't matter. Then, of course, the current is going to be diminished, is going to go down to zero, then the current is going to flow in the opposite direction, that's going to be negative direction. Then we have the maximum current in the opposite direction, negative direction, then the current begins to diminish, currents go back to zero, then it starts back in the positive direction and reaches its maximum value and so forth. So you can see how the current is going to oscillate back and forth, back and forth in one of those LC circuits. So an LC circuit is very much like a mass on a spring. It continues past its energy back and forth between the capacitor and the inductor, capacitor and inductor, capacitor and inductor, as go back and forth with the current going in one direction, then the opposite direction, back and forth and back and forth like that. So that's a conceptual approach of what an LC circuit looks like. In the next video, we'll actually show you the equation and how it defines how the current will oscillate back and forth and how the charge will build up on the capacitor and then diminish on the capacitor over time. If you're interested in that, stay tuned for the next video.